Today, I'm going to be trying out Dredge. Every so often, me and my Twitch scour the archives for a brand new casual fish game. And this is our latest find. Join me as I revel in fishing minigames as we explore a world where there's secrets hidden beneath the waters. I came to this place to find myself, drawn by the prospect of honest work and open seas, but what I found? Fish of the strangest ilk. People born from twisted cloth. And I'm beginning to think that this place wants me here no longer. The first to greet me in my new life is this smartly dressed fella, the Mayor of Greater Marrow. He tells me about my boat and sends me on my way to, um, uh, Engel? To work. But just before I can leave, he explains that I shouldn't stay out late at night. And me, being the expert at reading between lines, I conclude this. Get back before sundown, before the fog rolls in. Keep a close eye on the time. So spooky monsters come out at night. First thing I notice during this movement tutorial is my boat is exceptionally slow. I'll have to fix that as soon as I can. And being forced to look around, I can say I really like the art style. Simple, sure, but it just all blends together nicely, with a graphic novel feel almost. And now I reach what really got me to buy this game in the first place. The fish. So I love fishing minigames, I don't really know why. It's essentially just more organised quick time events, but the context triggers the fishman part of me and I can't help it. Looking closer to the box, I love the presentation, the fish dead centre of this mesmerising wheel, and with a recognisable mark of how well I'm doing. There's also two extra bits of info, stock high and coastal. At first I expect stock high to mean I'll obtain more fish per catch, but I soon understand after it changes with my success. On second thought, this makes more sense, but for some reason my mind didn't clock that. And coastal, it seems the fish have an identifier depending on where you catch them. That's really cool, and I expect this would vary per buyer. The second fish I catch is a different shape, and the wheels in my tiny fish brain begin as turning. A cod. Oh, it's different shape. Oh, I love inventory. Inventory puzzles. The game is teaching me that I may have to be choosy in what I catch to maximise my profit. And as I said right there, I love this addition to the game, especially the thought of the ship's hull filled with very neatly arranged creatures. I notice a settlement across the way, so I head for that. Along the way I discover I have a horn. I'm not really sure what it's for, but I suppose it's fun to use. Beautiful. After quite a lengthy docking process, I'm greeted by a dock worker who quite rudely assumes I'm lost, as of course I never am. After ignoring this man, I discover a trinket trader. I don't know what a trinket even is, but it's nice to know trinkets. he'll buy them from me in the future. He buys trinkets. Whatever a trinket is. Now I'm playing on a controller, and a lot of games like this, you move in the direction the camera is facing. And whether this is a good or a bad decision is fairly arbitrary, but my assumption led to me taking a point of damage. Oh, heck. I forgot for a second that it wouldn't follow the, uh, the camera. So rip hull. To be honest, this damage felt pretty justified. Let's hope it stays their way. I do a tad more fishing before nightfall approaches and I head back. I reckon the ocean in between the two villages is the starting area, so I can't be got by anything spooky. Because of this, I decide to fish a little more, also discovering that not all fishing minigames will be identical, which is really exciting. And sometimes yellow trophy marks appear instead of green ones, which results in a trophy fish. I assume this sells for a higher price, and I'm very pleased. I also begin to be concerned about the eye at the top of the screen, but I assume it's fine once again. I wouldn't want to find out. I mean, look at that eye, it's not like it... I mean, it is glowing a little bit. Sufficiently unnerved, I decide to head in for the night. And during doing so, I have my first unnatural encounter, a rock appearing out of thin air, causing me a second point of damage. Having checked before, I do indeed have four total health, so I'm already half dead. I also lost a fish overboard due to this, as each damage takes away part of my inventory. You can't really see this because of my face, I do eventually learn. To make up for this though, I grab some more squid, then head home, narrowly avoiding a second rock. Yeah, those lights popping up, those rocks just randomly appearing out of nowhere. Not a good time. Once back, the mayor kindly informs him I owe him a small debt before meeting the two vendors of the town. A fishmonger who insists on dodging my questions, and a shipwright who sells rods that catch shallow fish. I now notice my rod only catches coastal. 
also find she repairs my ship, so I won't be sinking anytime soon, thankfully. In addition to all this, I am granted a research part. I don't really know what to do with this, so I just put it in my storage. And I hit the rest button and finally end day one. Hey there guys, editing Salmoner here. It's day two of recording. I'm already beginning to regret this project. We're one day into dredge and it's already at five minutes, including an intro I may not even include because Vegas Pro kept crashing and adding a weird static effect to it. Not really sure why that's happening. Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll try and keep going with this. Maybe I'll check back at day 10. For day two, I've decided to check out the nearby island with some sort of mention on it. On the way there, I interact with the floating light and discover it helps keep the night terrors at bay. Very useful. I also discover my first unknown fishing type, dredge. Equipment. Oh, this is a dredge. That's a different type of fish. All right, all right. I've literally only just clocked that that's also the name of the game. Excellent. My adventure to the island is quite disappointing. Both the house and shed are locked. The shed being some kind of DLC purchase? I noticed this when buying the game and thought it was a bit strange. But the review said it was fairly reasonable, so... Whatever, I suppose. On my return journey, I probe further into the stock level feature and determine that fishing sites do run out. Good to know. I also have to say, I'm really enjoying the inventory system, even on the controller. I feel I have to emphasise this, as you still can't really see it. Fantastic face cam, as always. As the sky's dark and I notice a red light behind the island, and assume it is something to avoid. What's that red light over there? I'm guessing that's a big spooky fish. That's my guess. I elect to deprive the ecosystem of squid before finally listening to the tutorial and turning on my lights. It informs me the eye at the top of my screen is a panic indicator, so it seems it is of a similar style to Sunless Seas, another excellent spooky boat game. Drawn in by the sparkles, I read about the lighthouse. It stands high above my tiny boat and seems to be the game's visual routing point, similar to the Aurora in Subnautica or the Erd Tree in Elden Ring. Having stayed out past my bedtime, I began to question whether there even are any spooky monsters, before immediately being spooked by the lightning and some weird thing just missing my boat, causing me to crash into a rock. So maybe there aren't spooky monsters. But I mean, I probably shouldn't go out the night anyway, because there are all these stupid rocks. What is that? Someone throwing things at me? Back at the safety of my home base, I am accosted by the lightkeeper who interrogates me on my purpose here, and of course I reply appropriately. I have come to fish. There's nothing here for someone like you. No, there's lots of fish. You don't understand, I love the fish. Confident I got my point across, I am given a special order for specific fish by the fishmonger. Ones I haven't come across yet. I suppose I'll have to venture further to fulfil this, and of note, they are found in shallow water only, so I'll need to spend my hard-earned money on a new rod. I hop over to the shipwright and buy the cheapest of the two rods, as is the one I can afford. This also makes me aware that specific slots in my inventory are for specific items, so I'll have to be aware of this as my arsenal grows. I do stumble a bit with the controller here, and I'm confused why installing it takes time at all, but I sort of just shrug and move on. As my final act before sleeping, even though it is already day three, I have a quick chat with the mayor. He hands me a parcel and tells me to deliver it as soon as I can to Little Marrow. I'm not sure where Little Marrow is and I'm concerned that sleeping will disrupt the quest, but I sleep anyway and hope it all works out. Hello again, Editing Sauna here. Uh, it's actually week two of editing at this stage. I did those first two days in uh, a weekend and then I just sort of put it down. Was I lazy? Was I busy? Was I bored? Who can say? Maybe I was plagued by something. But I'm here now, and this is, uh, yeah, mm, we're gonna finish this a uh, hundred days, is it? Yeah. See you in a bit. As soon as I wake, I rush over to deliver this parcel, and thankfully I'm not too late. The dock worker's a little weird, but he pays me, so I don't really care. So I'm generally a little slow on these kind of things, but I finally notice that my inventory has a second menu. It has a menu, and in this it has a map, an encyclopedia of all the fish I could possibly catch. It has messages, which I picked up and didn't... I mean, I just... Uh, there, there you go. I picked it up there, I showed you, everything's fine. And it has a list of quests, which I probably will never check ever again. And moving onwards. So my current goal is to obtain shallow fish for the fishmonger. So I'm going to go from each fish location to each fish location, trying to find it. 
And on the way, I'll collect another one of those bottles that I definitely showed you before. What I do find, however, is oceanic fish, which I can't catch, and I have no idea how I can, because the shipwright doesn't sell any rods, so that's a mystery for the future. After quite a while of sailing, mostly because my boat is really slow rather than I've gone a long way, I do eventually find the eel, one of the shallow fish I need to catch. And it is quite the chonker that's going to take up a lot of my inventory space. Again, you still can't really see. I think I fix it much, much later. And I do find a shipwreck, which is a wonderful way of encouraging me to explore a little more. I also find my first trinkets to sell to the trader to hopefully help me buy some faster engines. On my way around the other side of the island, I find a couple things of note. I do actually find the flounder of my dreams to fulfill this quest from the fisherman. I find a cold stone. Um, I guess there's some various interactions that are just flavour. And I find a stingray, another one of the shallow fish. There's been a couple strange occurrences out to get me so far, but those are all in the safety of the start area, where I assume they're slightly nicer. Out here I'm a little worried, so I hug the island and go round. And I do start noticing some things that make me very concerned. It's a bit weird. Oh, hello. What was that? What was that about? I am a little concerned that if my panic were to get any higher, those would manifest into monstrous beings and start destroying my ship. So I head straight back to town. I have that happen for me sometimes. Something slithers into my cargo hold. You what? It seems that what I thought was something throwing something at me last time was some kind of creature trying to infect my fish, and the result is an infected flounder. I happily just give it straight to the fisherman and hope nothing comes of it. Obviously very happy with his infected flounder, he gives me another quest of a squid, which I've caught before, and a grouper, which I don't know about. That's fine though, I'm sure we'll find it soon. First of all, I go to deposit a research part I got from the shipwreck. I still don't really know how to use these. And then I go straight to the shipwright to buy an upgraded engine. Oh, I'm very, very excited to move slightly faster than a snail. It cost me quite a bit of money, but it is certainly worth it. It takes some time to install, which I still don't really understand the reason behind. And then we sleep, ending day three, kinda. It's already day four, but the sleep counts, right? I begin by trying to figure out what a grouper is. I check my encyclopedia, and obviously it doesn't already say there because I haven't caught one. And I figure out it's probably this one that's in the Gale Cliffs, so I set my sights on that. Oh, it's probably a coastal... this one, by the Gale Cliffs? Where's that? That's all the way over there. I'm not gonna be... I mean, I guess I got my new motor. Got my new motor. I'm very pleased with my new motor. I decide to head over to Gale Cliffs. Hopefully it'll only take me a day. On the way there, I find a familiar shipwreck. I imagine this is one I crashed in the past. And I find a fisherman's note and some items inside, including a brand new motor. I love motor. I do realise I'll have to go to the shipwright to install it. And it is a weird shape, so I wouldn't be able to use two. But I can put it straight into storage, which is really useful. Why can't I do that with fish, though? Unsure if the red lights are boot bugs. Oh, it's a whale! Oh my goodness, that's, aw that's awesome. Bye bye whale. Have a good time. I do really love just being able to encounter things in the game. I really hope that wasn't scripted and the whale just swims around the area and I just happen to come across it. But I don't know for sure, obviously. Just before arriving at the new village, a tornado appears. It's pretty obvious I shouldn't touch this, but I reckon going very close shouldn't hurt. I notice a small patch of fish and I'm very hopeful that these are the ones I want to catch. And it's not. That's, that's my ideas down the drain. Ah, that's not a grouper, that's a perch. I decide to fish a little more before heading in and talking to the locals. Now this wonderful dog and its owner seem to be after some rotting eels. Now, jellied eels used to be a delicacy of the UK, but I don't think they were rotting at all, so I'm not entirely sure on whether I agree with her take, but to each their own. She doesn't seem interested in buying anything else from me, but does mention there's a merchant nearby who can buy all of my fish. The only other person here or willing to talk to me is a retired whaler, who seems to have a complicated relationship with the place he lives and also with his brother, which I imagine is not something I'll be delving into. I finally read the fisherman's note from before, uh, and well... He knows. Deep sky, deep sky, deep. Okay. You got it, buddy. Sounds like the ramblings of a madman, so it can't have been my ship after all. I decide to do a bit of late night fishing and find another thing which is not a grouper before heading to bed, ending day four. Day five brings with it new opportunities and new sights as I explore this gale cliffs. 
I head out and find a stonefish, which is still not a grouper, as well as a hermit living on the mainland. He seems to be the retired whaler's brother, so maybe I will be getting into this family squabble. He also informs me his brother makes explosives, which sounds incredibly useful. After leaving, I take a very underserved point of damage. Oh, come on. And there is more fishing to be had. I didn't say this before, but look, more variations of the fishing game. This truly is an excellent fish adventure. It's at this point I meet the travelling merchants, and she really does seem to have it all. She's a traveller, a merchant, a fishmonger, and a shipwright all at once. It's very impressive. She sells some new things as well. She sells some crab pots, which I ignore, and she sells some refined metal, which sounds incredibly useful, but is also very expensive. There's also lights, which I already have, so I ignore them. She also has a quest for me to track down some fish. I'm sure I'll manage this at some point, so I take it, and I'm on my way. I feel like I should have just stayed in this starting area, but I thought it wanted me to go over here. <laughs> I'm beginning to doubt whether I should be here at all. I haven't found my grouper, so I figure I should probably go back to the safe shallows as I don't even have a story wise reason to be here yet. Going back takes me pretty much the rest of the day. And even with it being night, I reckon I'm so close to the start area I'm probably still protected. And just as expected, I'm fine. I notice a sparkling patch of fish and wonder if it's a quest marker, and that is pretty smart. And sure enough, there's the black grouper. Fantastic. I reckon I may as well catch the rest for profit, and so keep going. As I do, I catch a fish that results in a much more distorted catch noise. Oh, what's that? A tusked grouper. I'm guessing that's a spookier fish. A spooky fish it was, and with it I hoped for a nice selling price. I grabbed the squid I need as well, as I had still yet to retrieve them. Halfway through, however, the panic eye unnerves me enough to back my way into Little Marrow and sleep, before eventually waking up early and catching the remaining squid. Triumphantly, I return to the fishmonger with bounty in hand. He collects it all and pays me quite the sum. His eyes then turn to my tusk grouper. He proceeds to cut it open before handing me the handkerchief inside the beast and paying me for the pleasure. Very generous of you, Mr. Fishmonger. Pleasure doing business. I assume it's something I can sell to the trinket trader even if it is a bit confusing. As soon as I leave, however, a man seemingly in my cabin, or perhaps I'm in my cabin looking out, says I should let him inspect it at the mansion I'd visited before. Happy in the knowledge someone will pay me, I head to the shipwright to upgrade. Realising that while I do have lights, I don't have light lights, I decide to upgrade this time. I then attempt to install the fish rod I found in the familiar shipwreck before discovering both of the fishing rods no, are the same, the same and selling it. Okay. Sell. I further inspect the engine I got before and realise while it does have bigger numbers, again, I can't have both at the same time. So there's no point installing it at this point. The mayor rushes over to tell me the town is growing, which I see no evidence of, but decide to believe him. He then informs me the shipwright is expanding their services, which is much more interesting. I head straight over to the dry dock where I can exchange resources for ship upgrades. However, I have none. So I will. After visiting her main store, she hands me a book, which I forget about immediately. And then it seems she has a new rod in stock. It still only fishes in coastal, however, so it's of no use to me right now. It's at this stage I learn a vital lesson about books. Oh, I read that and it does something. Oh, oh okay. I probably should have done that already. It seems that books are a way to passively learn new skills or upgrades or something like that. I'm not really sure. I've only learned about books just five seconds ago. We're now going to head over to the mansion to talk with this shady fellow about the handkerchief. I am desperately in need of more money because I like money. I go to visit the spooky mansion man and he seems to be a collector of artifacts and grants me the ability to dredge for said artifacts. Supposedly a ring, a necklace, a watch and a music box. Pretty run-of-the-mill things, but I suppose they must be ancient relics or something. Who knows? Now I've encountered dredge sites before, so I'm excited to try it out. So, I could maybe, uh... Oh lord. What is this? It seems that while the dredge minigame retains the circle motif, it involves hopping from lane to lane. Quite a different take from the others, but a welcome one. And it seems to grant me cloth. This must be a resource for the dry dock. I suppose it makes sense the two would be introduced close together. With night approaching, I'm actually quite confident. Again, I'm close to the safe shallows, and I have a new light whose description mentioned less disruptions at night. With this confident, I fish some more and catch another deformed creature. Ooh, look at him. Look at that boy. Unknown green energy arcs and crackles over this fish's scales. Beautiful, I love him. He's my new favorite boy. 
he is my favoriteest boy. On my return, I am greeted by a builder who, despite the mayor's insistence the town is growing, wants to leave. She says, bring some resources to the location and she can build a new house. If I have time, I might get round to this, though it does mean less resources for my boat. The lighthouse keeper then has something to say. She implies the red light I'd previously seen is not a spooky monster, but is actually an artifact for the spooky mansion man. I then go to the fishmonger, sell my bestest boy, before finally figuring out what the research parts were for. Yes, the button that resembles research parts that has appeared on every single port does indeed use them. Who knew? And there's quite a few upgrades here, but I only focus on the early ones and unlock the oceanic rock. I do, however, notice there seems to be mangrove and volcanic fish, which I assume will be available in the other areas. Once I reach the shipwright, I realise that my boat doesn't have enough space for both the rods I already have and the new oceanic one. You can't see this, but there is a rod on the other side. This poses quite the problem, and I decide to sleep on it, ending another day. Wake up at four, be the early bird. I wake up as the early bird do, and I am informed by the game about crab pots. Having obtained one recently, I dump it close to the town. The UI informs me there are plenty crabs, so I am confident in a crustacean bound. I decided to loop the island once again. I revisited the shipwreck to claim the wood I had previously left. Now it has a use, I'm much happier carrying it. And I also finished reading my first book, granting me additional engine speed. Fantastic. On the stranger side of things, I discovered a shrine that hungered for curved fish. Oh, it likes... It wants me to give it, like, cod or something. Just loads and loads of cod. Aye, sure. I'll come back with cod, buddy. I made up my mind that at some point I would assist this shrine. It seemed like a kind and rewarding good deed. Returning home, I discovered there are no crabs in my crab pot. A travesty. But I am granted a new book from the fisherman, and considering how good the last one was, I am very pleased. With the materials I've managed to accrue, I successfully used the dry docks to grant me two additional rod slots. With this newfound space, I can finally obtain the ocean line. However, I am a few bucks short, so I head out a-fishing once again. However, I do so love distractions, so my mind remembers the lighthouse keeper's tale of the red light, and I endeavour to track it down. Night time's the best time for the fish. Oh, oh, there's a... The lady said I should go down here at night time. At the back. I am briefly confused as the light doesn't seem to appear until relatively late. I'm also confused by the red haze that appears up before me at the same time. I creep closer to the bright red beam and I'm whispered to by the red cloud. Not only this, but I notice another boat in the distance. A fellow fisherman, I assume. Who is that? There's a boat. Oh, hello. Oh, is following me? Excuse me, can you not? Look, it's a friend. Look at the boat. Boat friend. He's coming this way. If I stay still, time doesn't pass. So I could just wait for him to come say hi. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Wait, no, that's an angry noise. Whoa there. Whoa there. Why are you angry? Whoa there. Whoa there. What's, what's, what's all this about? What's all, what's all this about? No, I, I... What's... Why? Why panic? Why panic? I don't... Why spooky noise? Why are you a spooky boat? I'm confused. What's wrong with the boat? There's just another boat. Isn't it? Sufficiently confused about why other fishermen would attack me, I head home. But not before grabbing the freshly caught crab from my crab pot. It seems it takes a number of days for it to actually work. I then decide to catch one more fish, and then immediately crash my boat, causing two instances of damage. Eh. Returning home, the fisherman has a crab quest for me, but I only have one crab, so no bonus for me. And due to the damage to my hull, I am unable to buy the fishing line for oceanic fish. So a sleep of sadness awaits me. I decide to move my crab pot into deeper water, thinking that the bigger crab can only be attained in said deeper water. I then figure I should just hang out behind the island until night time, so I can quickly get to the red beam when it actually appears. Scraping together my two brain cells, I figure I can probably just catch it in the day, so I poke around for anything unusual. I just do it now. Yeah, 
I just do it now? Oh, well, what's what was the point of telling me about it being red at night time? Huh? Confused as to why no one actually told me to catch it in the day, I completely miss the point of the game and move on. I return to the collector and on the way notice one of the strange fish clouds I previously thought was a quest marker. I now theorise it is in fact a spooky fish marker. Okay, yeah, I think that's what it means. I think there's at least one distorted fish at stuff like that. I am beginning to feel more confident as I slowly understand the world around me. I hand the key to the collector and he begins to read passages from his book. As an avid enjoyer of eldritch fiction, I know reading books with symbols is always a bad idea. However, he grants me a haste ability, so maybe this one is fine. The collector then instructs me to seek out Gale Cliffs for more relics. I have already visited there on my fruitless fish hunt, so I am more than fine with this. And, unwilling to venture out just yet for fear of angry fishermen, I decide to turn in for- I wake up early and assume that as the panic meter is gone, I'll be safe from the fishermen and other spooky things. However, I do encounter this- Whoa there! Why is my controller shaking? What was all that about? <laughs> the game continuously leaves me bewildered, so once again I ignore it and do a bit of fishing. I test out the haste ability briefly before deciding the panic downside isn't worth it. After a bit more fishing I dock at Greater Marrow once more where the lighthouse keeper mistakes me for an old friend. Hmm, happens to us all. Now with my latest fish hunt I finally have enough for the ocean rod, which I install and then head to bed. Wake up early, as is my right. Today, day 10, I decide to fulfill my kindest action, feeding cod to a rock. I fish the cod source until it is depleted and then head straight over. I struggle with the placement of the cod for a while. Perhaps this is much easier on mouse and keyboard, but the thought of switching never even crossed my mind. Cod? How many cod does this need? This is so much cod. Cod? You're not having my trophy cod, that's for me. Cod. There you go. Oh, I got a sinew spindle. Oh, that's cool. The Grateful Rock generously gifted me a new fishing rod. It takes up half the space of two rods, being one rod, but can fish two fish types. Very kind of you, Mr. Rock. You can ask for help any time. I decide to use my new oceanic rod for the first time and catch a massive shark. Placing it in my hold is complicated, so I hope it raises a fair price. Back in my home base, I sell my fish and install my new gift from Cod Rock before deciding that night time is the most valuable time to be fishing, as you can get the spooky fish would go for a higher price. So I decide to head out into the water. While I'm out, I decide to check my crab pot. It seems it needs repairing, so reluctantly I do as required, and I am guided by some mysterious wind back to Greater Marrow. I'm not quite sure who can repair it, however. The fishmonger sells them, so I assume him, but it seems it is the shipwright, which makes sense. She is very crafty, but it's not obvious at first. I dump my newly repaired crab pot in the water and go fish for a bit more. Suddenly, a distraction. I remember I've been carrying a ring trinket for a while and should sell it at Little Marrow. I do so, however I notice a grieving father looking for a chat. It seems his son has had a bad time and I'm to retrieve his belt buckle. Well, as long as there's money in it, I'm happy to do so. I decide to do a bit more fishing before getting scared, coming back and ending day 10. Hello there, Editing Salmoner here. It's week three of editing this project. It's 10 days, it's 25 minutes, it's getting a bit ridiculous. I put a fair bit of time into this and the end is not in sight. I just really wish there was a way I could stop.